Yo, what's up, guys? Uh, today I'm just going to go over how you install Fuel Tech on your computer or the software that's needed to run it. Um, right now, I just went to the Fuel Tech website and you could just Google it Fuel Tech software and you could download the latest one. Once you download it, it's going to be a zip file. Then you uh, export the contents that's in the zip file and open it up. It should be a uh, something that's going to allow you to run the application that's going to install it to your machine so that's what i'm doing here now uh the process is pretty simple it's pretty quick once you got it on your computer uh you just run that exe file uh, i'm going to rename my folder just just because i want it to be a different name but it's whatever you want to do you do it uh, so I'm running it now you can put it in different languages I want to use English you just click next for the setup wizard uh, you can change the path where you want it to be installed at if you want it and you see how much space you need on your computer there and now it's just installing it'll take a little bit it's pretty quick though and once it's all done uh finish and it'll automatically run as long as you have that checkbox selected for run fuel tech so now it's running let's open it up you see the fuel tech manager with the different ecus that they offer so now you see the gui here and you could open up uh, a demo an example map you can create a new map you could open up files that you have in your computer for the logger if you logged any data. To, uh, this is just a fuel map right here. And it's PSI by RPM. And then there's some information a little bit lower to tell you uh, some information about what's going on with the motor if you have it running. Nothing's running right now. Here's a wiring harness. Uh, I'm using a FT450 so this is if you have like a 550 or a 600 or something like that or a 600 series you would see a wiring harness like that so this is where the map options are at and you could these are just check boxes you could check them for different options that you want I'm going to change mine to a well mine's is a FT450 so that's the one that should be selected and uh and to the left you have the different uh, menus for you know ignition table alerts uh, inputs and outputs sensor calibration stuff like that right now I'm looking at it, ignition tables this is where you change your ignition if you want to uh, and it's also by PSI by RPM and it's pretty much like any other software in, in terms of the tables when you want to update them uh, it's, it's basically uh, cells that you change and that'll change how the motor runs at specific points so I'm changing mine to FT450 because that's the one I have and I'm selecting the options that I want uh, I'm using, I know I'm going to have the wastegate, I want the burnout mode, three step, two step, stuff like that. Right here, here's where you actually, uh, you set up stuff like the maximum boost, the maximum RPM of the engine, uh, the, the firing sequence. I have a six cylinder, so that's the firing sequence that I'm going to use. Uh, and then I'm going to have a RPM sensor and a cam sensor. They're both going to be Hall. And I know the angle uh, of my crank position sensor is always, well, it's going to be 84 because I have a BMW. Uh, going to be using wasted spark uh, individual coil for ignition system. I'm going with sequential for uh, fuel. 60 pound injector so that comes out to 360 when you multiply it by six um, now I'm setting up the 
the motor, so it's low compression. The fuel type is gas. The cam profile is low. And now we see the wiring. Levels. And at this point, I'm just going to plug in the actual FT450 so you can see how it interacts with the software and what happens when you plug it up to a computer. I got to flip. Okay. So the ECU will start up. I got a splash screen set up of the type of car that I have. It'll ask you if you want to calibrate the TPS. I don't want to right now. And uh, just the dashboard and different buttons that you can have on the screen, like uh, burnout mode, anti-lag, traction control. I'm going to exit out of there. Uh, and you can see the different places that you could go. You can look at the fuel tables and ignition tables. you could change it I wouldn't change it in here I would do all this stuff on a computer because you you can't really see the whole table it would be annoying to try and change all of these but there's like a little square in the corner that kind of represents the the larger table but I mean that doesn't really help me out I'll just do that on the computer so you got overall fuel trim, RPM compensation, uh, just a bunch of other menu items for stuff that you might want to change. <coughs> so same thing for the ignition tables. You got main ignition table. Basically the same thing as a fuel table in terms of how you, uh, you know, change values. You just, you know, you click cells to the right or to the left to, to go to the right or the left. Um, in the dashboard settings, you got day and night mode. Uh, the dashboard setup, splash screen. So my splash screen is already set up to use a custom image. That's why the 635 popped up. This is the drag racing features. You got burnout mode, three step, two step. Launch delay, time based stuff in there. Uh, favorites if you want to set up your favorites um, they've got like a practice tree for drag racing people if you want to get some practice time in you can use a practice tree but you gotta have two step you basically have to have it in the car with uh, everything set up a diagnostic panel you can do a compression test, that's pretty cool. And you can look at what's happening as the motor's running. Stuff like that, like you can see voltage for a two step, three step, and uh, different things. You could check out whether it's cranking or not, stuff like that, and diagnostic. So, I mean, there, there are a whole bunch of little different menus in there that you could go to. So now, uh, we are back uh, into the setup of things and looking at ignition, fuel injection, uh, under engine settings, um, advanced map options. What I like to do when I go here, I like to change the table from 2D to uh, a cell it usually it starts off as like a line table but I'll change it so it like a line table like this but I will change it to uh, a regular table like this one right here so that way I can see all the cells uh, you could go up here and change your uh, constants as well under uh, sensors and calibration, interface settings, under interface settings, you could change the measurements units. You could change it from, I like to look at PSI. I've worked on platforms where it's KPA, but I'd rather do PSI. Just going through different menus. So now I'm looking at traction control and I'm setting up for a rear because I have a rear wheel drive car. 
and my sensors are both want to be on the front right and rear right um, right now I'm looking at my outputs because I had the FT450 I don't have as many so I had to kind of be picky about what I use for the outputs um, I'm trying to change them now they're grayed out I probably have to change the set in some way but I'll figure that out in a minute right now I'm going to save it and you, you see uh, in a map name you could put a name there and then save it it'll save as an FTM file yeah I can't change those I need to change them let me, oh, okay so I think I have to go to advanced options and yeah change these to manual so you see the ignition and the fuel I go to advanced options and now they're now I could change them to what I need them to be so basically because I want a waste gate I can only use that on a blue channel I can't use it on a gray one so that means I have to make one of my gray channels the uh, fuel injector and the gray channels they uh, they're usually ignition but you could change them to be uh, fuel injectors as well so I just gotta change things around a little bit now my wiring harness is changed up to reflect the changes that I just made yep so that's changed so I could change my inputs as well uh, I might put a scramble button in there yeah so I put a scramble button there and I probably won't monitor oil pressure I'll probably just have a gauge for that so I don't need to monitor that or fuel pressure so I'll make those my speed sensors so I can have traction control and then the dashboard setup you could change the setup if you want you could add more uh, screens you could change the display on each of the screens um, I'm putting buttons there now traction control active um, burnout mode can go there and anti-lag can also go there So I put data logger there, but you could put pretty much whatever you want there. And if you want more than one uh, dashboard screen, you can assign that if you want or put it, make it. So uh, you see you got ignition dwell tables, um, burnout mode. I'm going to change the RPM, target, and also the two-step limiter. I'm not going to change anything with timing because I can't. I'm not testing in the car right now, so it doesn't matter. So I'm changing that so it's automatically on. I'm probably not going to use and I like that way, so I'll change it back. But you could go through these um, settings and change them to whatever you need it to be and test them out, like the RPM for limiter. But I'm going to use a 
kind of for like a rolling anti-lag type of thing so it's going to be on a button so I'll use roll start uh, two step limiter my RPM target will be 4800 that should be more than enough to hit the targets that I'm trying to hit Wastegate, okay, here we go. So I'm using a uh, four port wastegate, but you could use the three port. You just have to change the PID, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, I want to change the targets here. Yeah, you got it. So this gain after I change, okay. So that gain, I'm going to put it on 25. But you'll have to play around with that because I'm I'm using a four port. So if you use a four port, the PIDs will be different between the three port and the four port. But you can use it to do the same thing. Uh, and I'll also use the proportional. This way, so I'm, I won't be like half throttle and then hit full boost or something like that. maximum map I'm not gonna hit 40 something pounds of boost ever so I'll change those not gonna really mess with that stuff but this I will mess with so I need to change my target pressure and what what I would usually do and I'm just showing this for an example but you want to put it whatever waist gray spring you have that's what you want to put there so if you got like a eight pound waist gape spring then that's what you want to put there so that way you can uh, your engine target table will allow you to put value that makes sense in there so overall I'm pretty much you know I'm trying to I basically want to be on gate, so I'll aim at like 10 pounds or something. I'll have a uh, eight pound waist gate. So I expect the turbo to really turn on around 4,000 RPM. So below that, I'll kind of aim at a higher target. So you got your traction control here. I'm going to change it to uh, vehicle speed based. Well, actually, no, I need to. It's not going to be. It should be RPM based. Let me go back. I'm just playing around with the time base because you can't have traction control that's like a time based thing and the wastegate will basically control the boost uh, but I'll just have it vehicle speed based right now got the fuel map and stuff but that that's pretty much it you know this is like a basic overview of how you set it up the software isn't that uh hard to learn it seems pretty straightforward but yeah that's how you basically set everything up from downloading it to opening it up and making a, a base tone